In the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to see her and said, Greetings, you are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greetings this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give you the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left.
taken from Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And everyone went there, uh, went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem the town of David, because he belonged to the house of the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting the child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she, was, she gave birth to the firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. This is the word of the Lord. out in the 
fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, the Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to, to, to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. <coughs>
And let's read it is from Matthew 2, verses 1 to 12. The Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when he rose and began to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and brought Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Yeah. 
Bible reading is from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself is not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all, all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. God's chosen people, Israelites, they built temples and monuments 
we know that synagogues to honour God's revelation to them of himself. By putting up such monuments and buildings, they were marking out God was here. It's completely amazing that uh, before Jesus was born, God had been doing limitless, mighty and powerful things. But when Jesus entered into the world, the verb tense changed from past to present, from God was here to God is here. And if this message is true that Jesus was born to be one of us that first Christmas, then we can only do one thing in response, and that is to be thankful to bow down and to worship him for who he is. Jesus could have stayed reigning in glory, but instead he chose to become helpless, to become a vulnerable child. Jesus chose to disguise that glorious divine identity for our sake. I think it's really great to have one Bible commentator, and Beasley Murray, how he talks about this. Um, he says that this section of scripture, John 1, is a supreme example of the communication and the commendation of the gospel to the world. It shows that Jesus is the ultimate revelation of the Father, sharing with him the sovereignty of the ages. We know that the darkness still rejects the light, but what does that matter? The light shines. We still all get to receive Jesus' light, and we get to be new creations who can live eternally with him. That's what the wonderful Christmas carol talks about, how the herald angels sing when it says, My Lord, he lays his glory by, born but man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them a second birth. But why would Jesus hide his glorious identity, the fact that he was God for us and become fully human? Well, John reading it affirms that Jesus, the true light that gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. It also explains for us that it was Jesus' intention to become flesh so that he could make his dwelling to be among us. Jesus wanted that personal relationship with us, to draw alongside us in friendship and to shine his light into any darkness that we feel. It was Jesus' desire to be wholly present for us and with us, to understand our hurt and to identify with our deepest pain. We could never ever reach up to him, but in love, he has come down to us. He was and is God and a prophetic challenger of all injustice. He was nevertheless touchable, approachable, reachable, relatable. The Christian writer Max Lucado puts it like this. Just call me Jesus, you can almost hear him say. Jesus was the kind of fellow that you'd invite to watch the football with you. He'd rest on the floor with your kids, doze on the couch and cook steaks on your grill. He'd laugh at your jokes and tell some of his own as well. And when you spoke, he would listen as if he had all of the time in eternity. You see, Jesus refused to be terror and religious, placed on a pedestal. Instead, he decided to take on humanity and to display for us how God intended humanity to look. And as we each day invite Jesus into our hearts to shine his light, we can have this light that um, surpasses our circumstances. I know I've been saying that a lot lately, but I just want us to keep going back to that and realise that however uncertain this time might be, we need to um, just um, let ourselves be blown away by that truth that Jesus is the light in every circumstance. We need to invite um, Jesus into those, those thoughts that we might have in doubts, particularly, 
and ask him to uh, be there for us and know that he will alleviate any uh, pain that those doubts may bring on for us, any confusion that they might bring on for us. You need to know that Jesus he drew alongside everyone who was confused or disillusioned and he still does that today. He did that um, and still does that today for, for those confused just as for those who are really clear about everything that they want in their lives. Jesus still spends time with every um, kind of uh, person from every background and he loves to do that. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we can know that Jesus is just as radical in his generosity today as he has always been. Jesus just sees each one of us as we are, and yet also the massive potential that we have with him living within us. He takes a long-term view of each one of us, and he is that light of the world who knocks at the door of everybody's hearts. And so as we carry on in this Christmas season, just want to ask, will you have that courage to make sure that you have Jesus 100% as your guide, no half measures? Because although he will always come in whenever we call on him, whenever we want to encounter him, it may be that today there's some particular special ways that God would minister to us through Jesus being our light. Let's just point in God's presence for a few moments and then I'll pray for us. Jesus, on this third day of Christmas, we pray for a greater personal revelation of the reality that you are the true light that has come into the world. Lord, highlight to us, and in these moments and throughout this coming week, any ways that we need to know for sure that you are the Lord of all creation, who has become human for us to empathise with all that we go through. We say to you, Lord, that we'd like this song by Dante Bow to be the prayer of our hearts. I feel your goodness on the mountain, and I saw your love down in the valley, and your grace, it still surrounds me. God, you've been good to me, and I cannot help but praise you. Faithful through the angels. Now I'm dancing on the rising sun to the hope for the future and the dreams to come. And when seasons change, now I won't give up. You've never failed me, now I'm not once, and my soul sings. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Son of God, Jesus, 
to all things you were made. You were formed in the womb of Mary. You became part of this earth. God of love, show us our place in this world. Let us all work for the common good. Help us to protect all life, to prepare for a better future for the coming of your kingdom. We hold before you those who are homeless and cold, especially in this winter weather. Bless those who work to provide them with shelter, food, friendship. Loving God, we pray for our children. Your Son taught his disciples to become like children. Lead us to work for their welfare, so that they may flourish in life, following the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray at this time for those in pain. We pray for those in hospital, surrounded, uh, surrounded and frightened with your tenderness. Give strength to those in pain. Hold the weak in your arms of love. Give hope and patience to those who have been affected during this time of the COVID pandemic. At this time, we particularly remember Janet Silverton and Graham Silverton. Father, you love our hearts and share our troubles. We pray for your love and guidance. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, Guide and strengthen us that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
it was uh, an F-58 anniversary, so um, never at the FC gives through what we see as a discipleship group, but uh, it would be really good for us to pray for them back. So Lord Heavenly Father, God Almighty, we just thank you so much for Steve and for Margaret and for the example of their marriage. Lord, we praise you that you have kept them rooted in your love throughout all of these years. And pray that you will continue to hold them in you, Lord, that they will know you as their anchor. And that Lord, they will continue to reveal love and hospitality to those around them. For the glory and honour of your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and the final prayer of blessing. May the Father, who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world, shed that love upon you, his children, and the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you this day and forevermore. Amen.